This ain't no chick flick. This is storytelling at its best. Fried Green Tomatoes serves up a heaping portion of tall tales, harrowing situations, and issues that we can all relate to. This heart-wrenching tale seamlessly weaves between the past and the present and truly makes you ugly cry for about two hours. The plot offers a perfect blend of comedic antics and wit with a sincerely beautiful story about a true friendship that hooks you the whole time. She's the best friend I ever had, and I love her. The film is superbly acted, and four powerhouse actresses were crucial to its success. So let's dig a little deeper in this garden of immense talent and see what the actresses are up to today. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and you should probably grab your box of tissues, because we're gonna revisit Lil' Bit, Ruth, Tawanda, the Avenger. and of course, Precious Ninny. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next throwback episode. And we want to hear from you too. What's your favorite scene from this beautiful movie? Tell us in the comments below. We read them all and we talk back too. Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates shines as Evelyn, an unhappy middle-aged housewife in a rut of a marriage. We helplessly watch as Evelyn tries to patch up the marriage, trying everything from cold beer and fried chicken to a surprise welcome home outfit made entirely of saran wrap. But thick-headed Ed just wants to catch the end of the game whatever game. We watch her character grow and evolve, slowly transforming into her inner power character Tawanda, writer of wrong, queen, queen beyond compare. compare. Her arc culminates at the Winn-Dixie parking lot when Evelyn finally unleashes years of built-up aggression that so many of us yearn to do. What a smashing scene. What are you doing? Are you crazy? There's it, girls. I'm older and I have more insurance. Kathy studied acting in college and in 1970 moved to New York City at 22 to further her arts education. She struggled for about seven years before finally earning a sizable role in the Dustin Hoffman-led 1978 film Straight Time. But it was the 90s where things became miserably good. Stephen King's misery saw Kathy Bates turn into a powerhouse who needed to be feared. Just ask James Caan. She would take home the Best Actress Oscar for that role. To misery. Bates was now a force to be reckoned with. She began directing television, including five episodes of the critically acclaimed HBO drama Six Feet Under, which she also acted in 10 episodes of. Bates' career is impeccable and expansive, one second playing the outlandish mother of Bobby Boucher in the comedic Waterboy, while the next being nominated for Best Supporting Actress for the dramedy about Schmidt. For all her inspiring success, Bates admitted to struggling with depression and coped in part by writing sad songs. Throughout the years, she's endured some health scares, first from ovarian cancer, then breast cancer. After lymph node surgery, she also suffered from lymphedema. After tackling all these health problems, Bates happily announced she's lost 60 pounds and stated that she's feeling great. You can see her today in 59 episodes of American Horror Story, or if that's too scary, try the Netflix movie The Highwaymen from 2019. She's terrific along with Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. Jessica Tandy. One of the two Oscar nominations for this film was Best Supporting Actress Jessica Tandy, aka Ninny Threadgood. Actually, everybody calls me Ninny. Ninny is the instrument producing this intricate tale of the past, a story of friendship between two young women called Iggy and Ruth. Ninny was a sparkling time capsule who began helping Kathy Bates' character with this story of female empowerment, true friendship, and love over color, sex, and traditional gender roles. This English-American actress got an early start, getting her debut on the London stage when she was just 18, playing opposite the legendary Laurence Olivier. Feeling like she had bigger roles waiting on the horizon, she moved to New York City. She found more success on the stage, including winning the Tony Award for Best Actress as Blanche in Streetcar Named Desire. However, three years later, when Hollywood turned this classic Tennessee Williams play into a movie, surely Tandy would get the nod to play opposite Marlon Brando. But no, Vivian Lee was chosen and we all know the rest. Something about Stella. Hey, Stella! Tandy's Hollywood career did yield some fruit, including her role as the domineering mother in Hitchcock's masterpiece, Birds. You did say birds. This former member of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People really aged into her greatest legacy, her work as the aging and stubborn yet vivacious elder in Driving Miss Daisy. It provided her a Best Actress Oscar, and she and Morgan Freeman were fantastic. 
Two years later, Fried Green Tomatoes was another resounding success, and Tandy, near the end of her career, was still showing the youngins how it's done. She really led by example, staying active in the business until just before she died at the age of 85. Mary Stuart Masterson Lil Bit, The Bee Charmer, Iggy Threadgood. Many names for this headstrong and heroic tomboy that won't shy down from a fight or a gamble. Masterson really carried the bulk of the acting load. She was raw, real, and riveting. Being an entertainer runs in the family. Her mother, Carlin Glenn, is a singer and actress who was in 16 Candles. And her father, Peter Masterson, was a writer, actor, and director. Mary was just nine years old when she accompanied her father in The Stepford Wives. She then went to a performing arts high school School in upstate New York, along with Iron Man's Robert Downey Jr. and Two and a Half Men's John Cryer. Impressive class. She and Robert Downey would cross paths again in 1989's romantic comedy, Chances Are. Two years later brought fried green tomatoes as well as praise from Pulitzer Prize winning critic Roger Ebert, who claims he was already a fan of hers. Masterson continued to impress throughout the 90s, including a personal favorite of mine as June to Johnny Depp's Benny in 1993's quirky comedy, Benny and June. Most recently, she had a recurring role in the NBC series Blind Spot, and in her mid 50s, I'm sure she's got some legendary performances to come. Here's a fried fun fact the scene when Iggy is covered in bees was actually played by Masterson herself. When the stunt double backed out at the last minute, Mary showed true Iggy bravery and did it herself. Mary Louise Parker. Some people are destined for stardom, and Mary Louise Parker certainly was. After studying at North Carolina School of the Arts, she moved to NYC at 23 years old. Three years later, she booked her Broadway debut in Prelude for a Kiss, which she received a Tony nomination for. Now it was time for the movies. She was cast opposite Kevin Klein in 1989's Grand Canyon, and then it was Fried Green Tomatoes' Ruth Jameson. Ruth was an intricate Southern belle, both the protector and the one needing protection, bringing Mary Stuart Masterson's character Iggy out of crippling heartbreak, only to become beaten down herself. The two had such authentic chemistry that exploded on the screen, and sometimes was messy, quite literally in my favorite food fight scene of all time. The spontaneous face full of blackberries that turns into a flower-dusted wrestling match is exhilarating to watch, and makes you love these ladies even more. What in the name of Christmas are you two doing? In the 2000s, Parker exploded even more so, this time on the small screen. She won an Emmy Award and Golden Globe for her drug-addicted wife in HBO's Angels in America. Oh, wow. And after returning to Broadway and winning multiple Tony Awards, in 2005, she became a weed dealer. On TV, of course. Well, when you put it that way, I sound just awful. Showtime's hit comedy Weeds provided Parker with eight seasons of fame-filled drama. And drama wasn't secluded for the television set. From 1996 to 2003, Parker dated actor Billy Crudup, best known for Almost Famous. They certainly made headlines as a seven-month pregnant Mary Louise Parker was blindsided when Crudup ended their relationship for a 15-year younger Claire Danes. At 56 years old, Parker lives in Brooklyn Heights, where she enjoys a tranquil life dedicated to self-betterment and helping others. She practices is transcendental meditation, which she says, quote, changed everything. Boy, those badass women portrayed four legendary characters. Together, they helped drive a beloved movie that is a storytelling marvel. It's almost two fantastic films in one. What is your favorite part of this Southern classic? Has anyone read the Fanny Flagg novel that started it all? Tell us in the comments below. We want to hear from you. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you always get updates on videos like this. From all of us at Do You Remember, I want to leave you with this ninny quote. I feel better because all these people will live as long as you remember.